I saw something interesting the night of Stackpole's murder. He just beat me to the phone, so I was left outside. Out of his view, but I could hear everything he said. Well, not that he said much. An Englishman, you understood? Yes, yes, I used to work as a deckhand on the ferries. He just said, McNulty here, the job is done. Then he put the phone down, walked out of the kiosk. What do you look like? Oh, tall, slim, sandy color hair, thin, thin face. Well, I went in then to make my call, and he walked off down the harbor wall. Look, I'll show you. He got so far, and then he stopped, and he threw something into the water. Well, the, the tide was up then. And then he turned around, and he walked back in that direction. Whatever it was, he threw in the water. He was still carrying his briefcase. Briefcase? Black? Crocodile skin? As crocodile as Paul Hogan. McNulty. Well, if he's a hit pro like we think he is, it'll be a fake name and passport. Yes, but he called himself McNulty on the phone. And in the hotel register, he gives the name of another hotel in Folkestone, the Chelsea Hotel, Marine Terrace. All right, well, you better come over and uh, bring our consultant clairvoyance with you. I'm a bloody pain in the arse. Eccentric, certainly, Sergeant, but um, I don't find them disagreeable. How soon can you get here? Uh, we'll be on the next ferry. I'm afraid we need you to return to England at once. But we've still got two French markets to do. We'll go. Right. After all, it was your magic that opened the whole box of tricks. Jump ahead of us. Sunny disappeared a few hours ago after a phone call. Skip with all these things while the owner was out the back cleaning his car. Left nothing? Not even the rent. Never expected one of my regulars would do a flit. Or some of the overnighters, yes, you expect the worst. McNulty was a regular. He was a tunnel worker, a five stain. Any connection with... No, 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 he was a general site labourer. Mostly on the surface, he drove dump trucks. And took short trips to France. Oh, nothing unusual here. They work shifts, often go over to get legless. I never get away running this place. Now, Mr Lonsdale, would you just tell my colleague the other bit of news you have about McNulty? Well, one night when he was down in his boots, they get like that, the tunnel workers away from home after they've had a few, he let it slip that he'd been in the SAS. And he never wanted to go back to Belfast because he'd had to take part in missions in Northern Ireland. And if anyone knew what he'd done in the way of shooting, he'd be a dead man. We're running a trace on McNulty with the MOD, but it may take a few days. Um, sorry we lost him. No need to apologise. I enjoy any excuse to have an English tea with cream scones. <laughs> Uh-oh, here comes Madame O'Carlty. Hmm? Well, look who's here. What's the latest? Well, nothing to tell you yet, but we'll keep you informed. Yes, well, you must forgive me, gentlemen, but thanks to the unexpected afternoon off, I'm meeting an old friend for tea. Ah. She's a seer like myself, and now and then, you know, as professional colleagues, we get together and uh, compare notes. Just like you. God, won't that be fun? Velvet, darling. Oh. Don't you look wonderful? Oh, and you, Gladys. Heaven and the planets bless you, darling. They really do. There's so much etheric energy there. Oh, I don't know about energy fields, dear. Have I had a week? Oh, I can almost feel your bad rhythmic tension. Another pot of tea, dear. And first, there was the hold-up. Then the murder. Murder? Then a stunning lateral breakthrough by Trevor. Well, you always said Trevor had no antennae, spiritually speaking. Now, of course, we've been brought in to work with the police. Oh, have you? Well, there's a lot of karmic ripples over poor Roger Stackpole's death. Stackpole? Didn't he work on the tunnel? Oh, alas, dear, no more. She's a client of mine, is Mrs. Stackpole. Oh, really? Yeah, she's had several sessions, although I'm bound to say I didn't forecast her Abby being done in. Mind you, she didn't really want to hear about him, didn't Vivian Stackpole? What do you mean? Well, the last time she came to see me, there was someone waiting outside for her in the car. I gave her a reading that she liked, you know, wealth, romance, definite aspects of change. Well, when she went back out to the car, 
she and this bloke kissed passionately and she called him by name. It wasn't Roger. What was it? Colin. Colin. Colin was the name Zelda said she heard quite clearly. Uh, around 40, slight Scots accent. Colin Dunblane, fellow engineer. Oh, the one who put the police on you? And the rest of them, Gladys. I wish you wouldn't call me Gladys. Oh, all right, Mrs. Moon. Oh, Trevor, you know what I mean. Okay, so what's this new information you've got to give Mrs. Stackpole then? Divined by a friend of Gladys. Gladys? Who the hell are you talking about? An angel of the Bright Star, sister of the Celestial Triad, otherwise, my mum. Look, we've had enough of your astral nonsense. I'm sure you have, Mr. Dunblane. I'm here to protect Mrs. Stackpole. I'm not even going to invite you in. Typical Scorpio. You are Scorpio, right? You are trespassing. You may show your birth sign with Indira Gandhi. Teddy Roosevelt and the USSR. But unlike them, you're a negative Scorpio. Now, Roger Stackpole was positive Aries, but unlucky. I wish Gladys had had a chance to do his job. Go on, Colin, tell him to go away. These people are mad. They actually believe in their astral bullshit. Crude and unjust. Not to say unladylike. This house is in mourning. And haven't I any decency? That's what you said, wasn't it? By putting a pair of thugs onto me to warn me off. And letting us all think they were from Montgomery Russell Construction. How very convenient. Concrete alibi. He also hired your gunman, McNulty, ex SAS. He was working on the tunnel. He'd heard about him. He jumped at the chance of a couple of grand to kill somebody. Oh, really? And you, Mrs. Stackpole. Roger was rich. He had the payoff money. The golden handshake from his former firm. Half a million. Trevor! McNulty! And the Crystal Ball predicts there'll be another episode of Moon and Sun next week. Next tonight, we conjure up film comedy in Baby Boom. Mm -hmm.